Well, good. I yeah. appreciate you having me on. It's good to get together here. Yeah. No. I'm excited to chat. Um, you know, it's funny. I uh, I think this is. Um, I'm glad we're chatting. I just posted a video on LinkedIn, which I'll have linked up in the show notes for people, and I want to get your take on it because you know you're you're a bor guy, you know, and people take my take on this particular issue. Um, they take it all different directions. So uh, I'll, I'll have it linked up in the show notes, guys, so you can check out the video. And it's actually from a, a solo episode that I did of the podcast earlier. But it's around this idea of stop trying to round out inbound accounts, right? Okay. So the take that I that I took on this video, and that and this is what I believe, is that when it comes to inbound accounts, so we're not talking about cold call prospecting or networking sure. or even referrals. We're talking about someone who goes onto the interwebs, searches first insurance problems, finds your agency and decides to either fill out a form on your website or call you. Okay. Right. And my take is very specifically that you do not try to solve, you do not try to write all their insurance. You solve the problem that they address when they call you. So if I own a business, okay. I, let's say I own a bakery and I call you and I say, hey, Nick, uh, this is Ryan. I just hired my first employee. I have no idea what to do. Um, do you think you could help me? You write the worker's comp. Now, you can say, hey, you know, it's easier if I, if I work with everything, you know, and if they want to give you a, give you the business real quick, that's great. But what I've found over and over and over again, listening to thousands of calls through trustedchoice.com, through my work uh, coaching clients, through all the time at Rogue Risk, through all my time at the Murray Group when I've been doing inbound. I think that, you know, what I find very interesting about this process is that like I've probably listened to and or taken as many or more inbound leads talking just about it inbound. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else in the space. And what I found is that if you try to write the entire account or try to sell them additional products, you lose that business more often than you get it. Right. And the pushback is, well, we differentiate. And I love this. And, and like uh, Zach Gould is pushing back on me a little bit. And Michael Cruz, who I love. I mean, I love all these guys and I love their takes. And, I, and, I, and I'm not saying their takes are wrong. I have just found that I think I think we operate. And, th and this is really where I'm interested in, in your position. And what I, I'm interested in your take on this particular topic. But then also just I feel like we a lot of the pushback I get on this particular topic is that I feel like comes from a legacy mindset idea mm -hmm. that somehow writing the entire account is doing proper risk management. And again, there are absolutely undeniable evidence that the more policies you have, the higher your retention rate. So I'm not, oh, I'm not sure. Denying. I just feel like, and I think about my own customer experience, and then I'll leave this to you, is that when I need help with something, right? Let's say I call us, I, Spectrum is our cable service here. Let's say I call Spectrum and I need help with my Wi-Fi. And then they start and they, they're like, okay, great. Well, what about TV? Well, I don't need TV. Yeah, but, but right. we have the TV package. And I'm like, and I'm like, I don't need the TV package. I need you to make sure that my Wi-Fi works. Well, if we speed up your internet, you could also get TV and phone. I'm like, no, I have a phone. I don't need a phone. I don't need TV. I need you to take me from the base level spectrum internet to the top level spectrum. Internet. That's why I'm calling you. And and now I'm like, now I'm like, ah, like oh, you're freaking pissed off. Yeah, now, now I'm getting frustrated, right? And I feel like this happens in our space too. I, I'm a business owner. I hire my first employee. I've heard of workers comp. I know I need it, but I have no idea where to get it or what it is. I call you and now you're talking to me about my commercial auto and my yep. cyber and hey, who does your personal lines? And, and now I'm like, all this person wants to do is sell me shit. I'm calling someone else. And then they ghost you and then agents go, well, inbound leads are crap or the internet leads are crap or people are just tired. It's like, no. You they called you with a problem and you didn't solve their problem. You tried to do you tried to do what was in your best interest, Correct. which was write all their policies at one time. And what I'm advocating for is this idea of solve their problem and then have systems, processes, and a cultural belief structure of account rounding and upselling at every touch in the future. And um, I just find it interesting that. Uh, there's like this legacy concept that if I don't write all their business and I don't write it all in the initial interaction, that somehow 
they're not going to stick. And I, I just haven't found that to be the case. But I, I love your take on all this. I know that was a well, lot of intro. No, it's a lot. It was good, dude. And I hadn't quite thought about it that way before. And I, you know, honestly, never did a ton of inbound. That's uh, that's yeah. one thing I, you know, with this business that I've really started dabbling with and, and kind of you know focused on. But it's interesting. And, you know, my wife and I, it's like a couple years ago. I'm like, son of a bitch. Like, I need a personal stylist. I want somebody to help me yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. And so, but in the beginning, it didn't start like that. It started like, I need a pair of pants for this wedding to go with this jacket that I've got. And you call all these people that, you know, custom clothes, we've all been hitting up by them. Like, you know, yep. And they're like, okay, well, you need to come in and we're going to do some measurements. We've got to figure out your summer casual style. This, I'm like, summer casual, dude, it's a dead of winter. I got a wedding in the spring. I just need a damn jacket. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And it literally, as you're saying that, it hit me. I'm like, because I hadn't thought about inbound that way before. But the, when you're talking about, like, I would get frustrated. Yeah. Like, because what's the take? You're spot on. You're just trying to sell me a bunch more shit that I don't necessarily need. Yep. At one point, did I probably need a stylist and do I need the full measurement? Yeah, probably. But was I personally there yet to actually sit down and go through that? No. Like I needed to, to solve that one problem. And so I think you're spot on. I think that the take that I would add to it is like transparency on the front end of how the process works. I think, you know, especially, you know, the BOR and everything that I'll do with that. It's like, that's the simplest thing. Like take the inbound thing. Hey, prospect, I'm I'll solve this problem all day long. You need to understand some some ways that the industry works though. Here's yep. what it looks like. Ultimately, long term, the best strategy for you is gonna have yeah, uh, to have everything with one carrier, one policy, or one renewal date, multiple carriers, one broker at least. We can get to that point, but let's get this thing solved so you can get that employee hired and go do whatever yeah. you need to do. Yeah, like, and, and you just hit on it, right? So like I I'm perfectly willing, and, and again, this is all from beats doing thousands and thousands of these calls yeah. that I have this perspective. This is not like theory for me. This is like, I've tried it every way. I've right. lost <laughs> more accounts than any, you know, I've lost, I've watched more accounts ghost me or not call me back or say no or whatever um, for every reason. And I just, what is wrong with saying, hey, I'm going to do a tremendous job for you on your workers comp. I'm going to crush you. You're, you're going to have no workers comp problems. Okay. I think it's perfectly fine to even say, look, man, it may even be easier for you if you just, bring over your package too. You know, I, let's deal with that in a couple of weeks. No problem. Let's get your, I want to get your person on the job and I want to make sure you're squared away. Cause you know what I'm doing? You know, again, guys, if you're, if you're listening to this and, and you, you know, struggling with this concept, when you solve the one problem up front that they have, you have just now become a massive value creator in that person's mind, right? Because you didn't try to sell them something they need. You weren't pushy, right? Doesn't mean you can't ask some open-ended questions and figure out what's going on with their account. It doesn't mean you can't be taking notes going, you know, this person, this company probably really does need cyber or, hey, I need to BOR the front end. It's, to me, it's very similar to a BOR strategy. You're just trying to be a value creator for them and getting them to choose you. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get them to choose you as their, as someone they trust. And once they trust you, they're going to be willing to bring all their other stuff around and refer you and leave a Google review and all the things, but they don't trust you yet. And the more well, you try to push on them, the more they're going to go, all they care about is the money. Even if that's not true. Again, I don't believe anybody who's pushing back on me on this post. I Actually, I love everybody who is. I think they're all amazing. I think the, the difference is, I, I don't think we're necessarily thinking through, particularly to inbound, referrals, completely different. Outbound prospects that we reach out to to do BOR because we think we can be a better, completely different. There are other veins that I would say this is not the tact I would take. Only specifically to inbound people who reached out their hand and said, I have a problem, I need help. That's what I'm trying to get to. So, bam, with that, I want to put this to bed. But right before we got on the call uh, to do the podcast, this um, uh, all these comments started blowing up with this uh, video that I put out. And I just thought You're it was really perfect. interesting. But... I said, you're going viral with the thing. You're wow. pissing people off. I don't, I don't know about that, but <laughs> it is uh, it is fun. And, and I and I love these conversations. I feel like these are the great conversations that we have. You know, and like I said, the people that are that are pushing back, I, they're all, it's Michael Cruz and Zach Gould. I mean, these are great, great guys, great thoughts. I, I'm not hating. I just um, feel very strongly on this particular topic about this particular workflow. Um, just from my own, like I said, from my own beats. But dude, so- I want to talk to you about, you know, we've, we've connected a few times and stuff, and I want to talk about uh, what you have going on with um, producer systems and, and in particularly this whole BOR thing, because 
uh, I think there's a few different people that are teaching some different strategies and, and we can get into, to, into your particular style. But before we, before we get to that, like I was never, I mean, I've done BORs, but I've never, I was never a guy who like sold or prospect on BORs, right? Like what yeah. you, I, I never did what you teach. It just was never, you know, it was never the way that I operated. Um, so, so I'm like a neophyte to this to a certain extent. So I'm very interested in like, maybe just for those who are listening, who, who are more like me, maybe they do more personal lines and BORs just aren't a big part of their process or, or they're, you know, small commercial or main street, whatever. Um, or maybe they're just new in their career and they haven't got there yet. Like talk to me just a little bit about the baseline I know it's super remedial, but a little bit of the baseline on what exactly is a BOR and what are you trying from a tactical sense, what are you accomplishing and using a BOR to bring in business before we get into the whys and the hows and some of that kind of stuff that I really want to dig into just the very baseline of like versus just rewriting someone's insurance. What are we actually doing here? Yeah. So, I mean, the baseline is where we are literally presenting to the prospect. Here's why you should go with me, right? Here's why you should choose me to be your broker, to go the, to the entire market on your behalf. Rather than quoting. So if by doing that as the broker, you're guaranteeing revenue. Okay, cool. Right? We're going to get paid. Or we know we're going to get paid at the end of it. Let's say it's 90 days. We know we're going to get paid at the end because regardless of what happens with the marketplace, we know we're at least controlling their current insurance program. They have insurance. We're going to take it all. Okay, cool. The client doesn't give a shit about you. They, oh, great. You get to guarantee revenue. Who cares for you? Right? What is it? What's in it for me? And so... For the client, the benefit, the strategy is to have one broker to actually see the entire marketplace, actually have a solid negotiation. So what we're you know, positioning and pitching to the client is like, I don't care if it's me or not, dude. Kind of what we're talking about the inbound, just educate them. It's like, you want to get the most on the market? Well, it's changed. You used to go quote multiple brokers back when the agents sold that exclusivity and this broker had, had this carrier and this broker had this carrier. And so you had to go to both to see two options. But now both brokers have both carriers. And so you're better off finding one broker who can get to the whole market, and then they can go out and negotiate and pin the market against them, each other and come back to with one, you know, with one option. So, so that's basically, in, yeah, back in the day, the idea would be that, you know, you know how uh, carriers used to pitch their appointments on like franchise value, like there's like a franchise yeah. value to the appointment. Um, I felt really bad one time because a carrier pitched me on, you know, there were, we were going back and forth in the. You know, this guy was a little old school and a little pompous. And he talked about, he, he said, you know, something, 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 you know, the franchise value of this appointment, I kind of like giggled a little bit. <laughs> you know, that giggle is probably the wrong way. I just kind of like chuckled. Maybe it's probably a more masculine yeah. way of saying what I did. Yeah. And I did, I uh, you giggle. I get yeah, it. yeah. And, and he kind of like, he kind of like did the thing. And I was like, dude, it's 2022. Like, are we still talking about franchise value with carriers? Like, I'm not saying your appointment isn't important to me. That's why we're on the phone. But like, do we really believe that like I'm going to sell for more because I have your appointment? Like, is that what you're pitching me right now? And, um, and, and, and I think that's a really good point. So to get to the actual point of my comment is that like, so, so what you're saying is that there was a day when like this guy would have X carrier and why a carrier and then this over here would have ABC and to get to all these carriers, an account would have, would have to shop multiple brokers. But today, for the most part, through wholesalers, through networks, aggregators, and, and, and just in general, uh, uh, agents and brokers kind of in, in the, the looseness of carrier appointments to a certain extent or the, the uh, spread of carrier appointments, um, it's not the case. Mo most, most agents are going to be able to get to most carriers and in that way. It does not make sense for a large account to, because I'm assuming this is middle market stuff, like small accounts, this isn't really as important or maybe as much of a pitch, right? Say, so, on small, I would still run it into the broker and just condense the process, make it a shorter yeah. process, still educate on it, because I think it still is, is effective. And you're spot on the way you're thinking about it. I mean, the broker, like the broker in town could be the biggest prick in the world. Right, but they're the only one with a hundred mile radius that has travelers, and travelers is really good at landscapers, and you're a landscaper. It's like, Shit, okay, I gotta go with that guy. Like that's how it was sold out. It's like you had to come to yeah. me. My service can suck. Yeah. I could not pay attention to your experience about any of that stuff, but I've got the best carrier. Yeah. And the price is 20% lower, so you gotta come through me. So that's that's kind of where we were, and it's evolved, right? To your point, we've gotten pretty much every broker has access to pretty much every carrier. 
So the, the client, the consumer, the best strategy is to have one broker do that. I mean, you don't have multiple CPAs. Can you imagine that? If that's how we ran the, C, like, the, the tax system, I was like, all right, I got to lower my taxes. I've got three CPAs in here beating, the, beating it up, see what they can do. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't work that way. And then you add on top of that, the, the carriers block the marketplace. So it'd be like, if every year you had three CPAs, but you could only get one to get, actually give you a damn tax return. And finally, a broker comes in and says, well, hey, the broker, a CPA, you know why that happens? Because the IRS is only going to release your taxes once. They're only going to do it with one CPA. So they send it to the first person that actually submits your tax return. That's the CPA that gets it. That's the CPA that gets paid on. The, the brokers are the same way. The care is only releasing release one quote. And so if you have brokers that are actually in there competing, and they need to be the first one in, what are they going to do? They're going to put together a shoddy submission so it's the first one to the carrier. So now your first representation, your first you know, uh, impression with the carrier is shitty because it's a complete submission. And so that's the concept. Like you go and you hire a CPA, you do all this work, all this, you, know, you spend all this time to make sure you got your best shot to file your tax return because you only get one shot to reduce that tax liability. It's the same with the insurance companies. You're going after that and negotiating with that. Yeah. I had this happen to me once early with Rogue where I brought, uh, I brought an account to a carrier and submitted it. And I, I'm like, you know, I thought this was a lock-in, right? Because in my mind, the carrier that I was submitting it to, this is something that was in appetite, seemed to fit, the size fit. You know, I had the loss runs. You know, it was, it was a full submission, whatever. And, uh, and it, it goes a couple of days and I'm like, this is odd that I haven't got a response. Like, this is a knockdown account. I would think I would have this yeah. back and we'd be writing this already. And I reach out to the underwriter and the underwriter goes, oh, you know, I bottom piled that because every year a different broker submits it to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, that was like a really interesting moment for me because one, I, I had heard, you know, you hear things, you know, about it, but I never actually experienced that. And, you know, and she's a good underwriter and, and a good friend and, uh, and, and she wasn't doing anything wrong. You know what I mean? I, I, I understood what she was coming from. Her point was, if every year this account is submitted to me by a different broker, it shows a lack of loyalty by the customer or by the client, you know, whatever. And, you know, while if you're telling me you have some unique and different relationship with them, that's going to get us the business, I'll spend time on it. But I'm not just going to requote and fire off a new proposal to a different broker every year just to not get the business. And I think that well, you don't, you don't always love to hear that because especially early in a, in a business cycle, you're like, yeah, I just want to write everything I can. Yeah. I, I took that to heart. And I said, you know, that really makes a lot of sense to me because, you know, these, the, a lot of these underwriters, especially the ones that are doing middle market or larger accounts, you know, this takes real work for them. And you need to present them with something that they think they're going to win because they're humans with their own goals, just like us, right? Just like salespeople. So that was a really interesting take for me. Um, and it really got me thinking about uh about this process a lot because how you submit the business who submits the business it's meaningful to these guys they there's only so many accounts in these regions and they see a lot of the same stuff yeah and, and if you took that back to the, the, the prospect like hey just got off a call with an underwriter i mean in essentially what you're saying is like your name's trash in the marketplace it's absolutely been destroyed based on how you've navigated the market over the past three to five years they yeah. would have no idea yeah they're like, hey, dude, I'm just playing the game. I'm just trying to lower my premium. Like, what yep. do you mean, my name's trash? Like, this is what I was trained to do, right? The industry trained the, you know, the brokers, producers to go out and quote. So then the, they trained the consumers. So the consumers are like, well, oh, these guys, people are calling me. So I, I let them quote. What do you mean I destroyed my name in the marketplace? And so it's like that education to the prospect. Hey, here's how you actually navigate it. Here's how you repair the marketplace. Here's uh, your name in the market. Here's what you need to do. You need one broker to do it. Maybe stay out on the market one or two years. And then if you want me to be the broker in its simplest form, here's what I can do to help you do that. Yeah. Do you think the clients actually care? Like, do you think, and, and I mean that honestly, Dick, do you think that you, you bring that back and you're like, look, man, like this market's a no-go for you for a while because they, you know, they've seen the submission too many times by too many different people and it just shows them that you're not serious, or at least that's what they believe that to mean is that it's not serious. Do you think they care or are they just like, nah, whatever, just shot me someplace else? Like, do you think that's, is that a real... Does that really carry weight with them? 
So it's interesting before you were saying like, hey, this is what I know about the inbound stuff because I, you know, I've had the beats. Like, yeah. that's, you know, I basically was looking at it. It's like, I, just, I was in a 12 year science experiment. Like, I was literally in this lab figuring out this BOR stuff. In the beginning, they didn't give a shit. They did not care. It's my attitude in the beginning, right? Prospects talk about price. Oh, I got to pay less. I, and you can't avoid it. Every one of them. I've never met anybody that is not price sensitive when it comes to insurance. And there's different variations. And, you know, some are like, oh, you know, they're robbing me blind. They got the tallest buildings. Whatever bullshit they want to give me, they're concerned about price. And so in the beginning, though, when I was on B- selling BOR, when I started doing it, I didn't want to talk about price because it was like, that's beneath me. Yeah, I'm not going to discuss yeah. premium. Like, are you kidding me? Like, if you want somebody to talk premium, go, that guy will quote you all day long. Like, I, I couldn't get myself to do it. But as I went through it over the years, and then ultimately I see leaving, you know, and doing what I'm doing now and actually being able to go, you know, talk with people, hire other coaches and here's what I was doing and really dissect the process. It's like, holy shit, that's all we should be talking about in the sales process. Because if you think about it, that's their number one problem we were talking about earlier, right? Yeah. Hey, my problem is premium. Yeah, that's great. Shut up and let me show you all this coverage stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You don't have a premium problem. You Did you know you're missing debris removal? That's such an important, yeah, right? And so, and that's what we're doing at the beginning, especially in the beginning at, at, when I was basing my BOR pitch off of coverage analysis or experience model analysis. What I wasn't doing was solving their problems. So to answer your question, do they care about it? Only if you position it correctly. So when we position it back to them solving their problem, hey, look, prospect, I get you want to pay the least amount possible. Who wouldn't? I've never met anybody that wants to pay more. The way you go about that and the strategy that you run to navigate the market directly impacts your premium and your chance to pay the least amount over the next three to five years. Here's the strategy you need to run. So if we can frame it in a way that's tied to them solving their problem, and really what we're doing, the sale, the actual BOR sale isn't about asking for the BOR. It isn't about you know our, our risk management services, our loss control, our experience about any of that bullshit. Even though it's important, right? There's this marketing term, you probably heard it. You sell them what they want and give them what they need. So let's give them all that stuff in the back end because we know they need it. They need a good agent. They need the right coverage. They need all that. But they're trying to solve the premium problem. And so when we connect it to that, the pitch for the BOR is actually selling them on a new way to think about their problem. Yeah. And if we can get them to do that, right? Instead of quoting to solve your premium problem, hire one broker and run this strategy. If they do that, it's game over. They're going to sign the BOR. Um, so you're sell them what they want, give them what they need. That is the whole crux of like, my inbound selling system, the one called yeah. close process, it's it's literally, and this is this is the disconnect that I think going back to the very beginning of our conversation, and and I love that it's now connecting, and and really I believe this is how you sell, uh, sure. but I love that you're connecting it to this BOR process because that's the whole thing. Like, you know, you know, I think, and I said this in one of the comments back to one of the people who who were um, sharing their thoughts was like, you're. You're associating the fact that I'm saying solve their problem with this being transactional. I said, that's a that's an assumption, not a reality. What I'm doing is solving a problem, but I'm also giving them what they need, right? So I'm just not, I'm just not pushing things on them today that they don't necessarily, like if they have a package policy and that package policy is fine for today, right? It serves their need yeah. for today. Why would I mess with that when what they really need is to get their employee on the job site through this workers' comp policy? So, you know what I mean? So I'm going to get them what they need. I'm going to understand what they want, come behind them. And so much of this is, and 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 this is where, you know, I want to I wanna get your, your take on this too as it goes to BORs. And, and I'm assuming there's a little bit of congruency here, but it's like, so much of this is open-ended questions. And this is the part that really I find the, the biggest disconnect and so much of what we do, particularly on the sales process, is information gathering versus asking open-ended questions, right? Mm-hmm. Like we get a prospect on the phone, all of a sudden it's like, well, who does your comp? And how, what's your limit? <laughs> and how much payroll do you have? And, th- and what are your class codes? And you're like, yeah. and like none of that makes means anything to me. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. care. What are you saying? Like, all I know is I got a big audit bill last year and I don't want that to happen again. And you're like, well, what about it? And it's like, how about we slow down and let's figure out what their problem actually is? Because oftentimes they'll lead with price, but that's not really what they're going to buy. Because if you come back with price, and, and again, by listening to thousands of, of inbound calls, price, 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 price is the beginning of the call. And because we don't actually dig into what's going on, we just take their information, even if we quote their whole account, and we come back on price, they don't close. 
And then we go, they're tire kickers, they're BS accounts. These people don't really care. They don't value relations. Like, no, price wasn't actually the real problem. They may have called you on price. They may have led with price because as you said, and I love it, they've been trained to lead with price. But that's not actually what the problem was. And we didn't slow down long enough to figure out what the real problem was that would get them to buy the policy. And that's, it's, it's such, it's a, it's a nuance, but to me, it's a, it's crucial. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. It brings me back to, um, I was probably like six months in, eight months in, I left Brown and Brown. I went to this agency out in California. I was living in Boston at the time. It snowed on Halloween. And I literally, I'm like, fuck this. I've lived in Atlanta my whole life. Like I'm going yeah, somewhere yeah. warm. Like, so I moved out to California and, um, uh, and to land at this agency and they're like, dude, perfect timing. It's everything we're talking about. We've got access to a hot new landscaping program. We're one of four agents in all of California. All right. So what exclusivity price, right? It's going to be 40% less than the current landscape association. There's like some uh, association program or some bullshit that like they literally down yeah. the more place. So we're, I mean, me and those like a couple other producers and um, you know, I'm the newest, the youngest, we just start him and and then I have connections down. I don't know anybody. I literally moved there six suitcases, like broke into a friend's place. I'm like, I'm going to crash here for a couple of weeks. Like, and um, so I started, started hitting the phones. And I built up a $4.8 million pipeline in like a quarter. Everything renewed premium. At the time, I was still talking premium. Everything renewed between April 1st, April 13th. And what was the pitch? Hey, one of four agents in all the state. We're going to be 40% less. It's time this, you know, this, uh, what the hell you call it? Like a monopoly comes to an end. Like, we're, you know, we're just going to kick this, this carrier's ass. Boom. I'm taking applications. Everything we're just talking about, payroll, sales, all that shit. And the reality is we weren't 40% less, right? The other carriers just didn't roll over and watch half their book, you know, walk out the door. So they yeah, came yeah. down. We weren't as competitive as you know, the program thought. It was the first year. So we were about 12% less. And out of the entire thing, I wrote a thousand dollar bop. I'm four point eight three. Yeah. And I was 22. I already spent some of the damn money. Like it was, it hurt. Like it was not a good situation. And the reality was, I sold it completely on price and exclusivity and I didn't deliver. And at the yeah. end of the day, it was out of my control. And what did they do? They looked at two quotes. Nick, you said you'd be 40%. You're only 10%. We know the other broker. We trust them. They solved other problems. We're staying with them. Yeah. And that was it. at that point, I'm like, fuck this industry. I'm like, I'm quitting. Or I'm figuring out a different way because I'm not going to go. I'm not going to do this for, for 30 yeah. years or whatever now it was. It, it was just, and it was so eye-opening to me. And that's when I started figuring out this BOR thing. So let's talk about the BOR thing, right? Like. When you approach someone, are you like, how do you put yourself in front of somebody and start to create differentiation? Like, what, what does that look like? I mean, obviously, you have secret sauce to your system, and, and I'm not asking for that. But like, at a high level, how do you start to, you call somebody and you say, hey, you got this broker, and you've had him for five years, and I'm calling you to tell you that you should work with me, right? Like, and yeah. here's the process. What, how do you start to break down how you might differentiate from them, why they might get more value from working from you. Like what, what does that, what does that start to look like? How are you, how are you helping your coaching clients do that? Like, what are your theories around that stuff? Yeah. So, I mean, it all comes down to positioning on the front end. I think that some of the biggest mistakes I'm getting to be a war are caused by positioning on the front end. And so you have to position it from me. I would say lead with the BOR without saying BOR. Gotcha. Right. It's like, if you're going to go on a, your first date and you're interested in marrying the girl, Okay, you can think that and you can be taking her down that path, but don't freaking say the word marriage on the first damn date. Like, yeah. you're in, and that's one of the mistakes. Like, people, you jump in, you're, you're going to have to fire your agent. It's like you've been talking to this person for, for 10 minutes, less yeah. than that. Right? Or the other mistake I made yeah. in the beginning, I would like, I, I would say anything just to get a damn meeting on the books. So yeah. they said, oh, hey, you want to, uh, yo, you want to come quote? Yeah, yeah, shit. I'll quote. I'll be there. I'll be there tomorrow. What time? And then I'd, in that meeting, I would try and convince them that they should move down this path and be a war. It was too late because like, it was like bait and switch almost. Nick, you, you showed me, you told me you're going to quote. Yeah. And so when we talked about positioning on the front end, really what we're trying to do is get them, position them to think differently about solving this premium problem. I think differently about this strategic approach that they're taking to the marketplace, which they're not getting. Every broker's calling and giving them some version, right? There's all these different levels of you know, quoting all the way down to like, I'm going to do a full root, uh, risk management review you know, of your entire your program and get back to some results, right? And so everyone sounds a little different, but it's all the same. It's the same experience. I need data to show you value. That's the transaction. And the prospect's been through it a thousand times, right? Or they've at least gotten a thousand phone calls. 
And so it's like, okay, do I want to engage with this broker? Have him come out to my office, spend 90 minutes with me, then try and take my ass out to lunch just to build rapport. And then I'm going to send them all the policies and all this information. Then I'm going to work with them for 90 days. They're going to ask a thousand freaking questions to maybe find out if they can save me money and I should move with them. Like that's what's going on in the prospect's head. And so we can't just have a different version of that or a better version of that. My script's better, right? No. What we need to do is create a completely different experience and be able to provide value to the prospect without getting anything in return. That's what we're looking to do on the front end from the positioning perspective. So typically it would go something like, hey, look, I know you get a call. I, I didn't get calls from thousands of brokers, hundreds of brokers, whatever numbers, thousands would be insane, but you know, hundreds of brokers, I don't actually quote insurance. What we found is that that actually hurts your chances of paying the least amount of premium. You have 15 minutes to talk about maybe a better strategy to navigate the market, drive down cost. You know, so we're, we're taking them somewhere in a different direction. We don't need anything from them. And then we're getting on that 15 minute call and we can actually interview them and start to, again, frame the process that we're taking them down. But the key to it is at the end of that 15 minute call prospect, you're going to have a strategy to navigate the market better than you currently are. So all we're going to do is show up and they're getting something compared to the traditional model where they got to give and give and give to maybe get something. Yeah, I, I love that um, approach. It's very similar to what, what we do with inbound stuff. You know, it's to me, the longer you can go Without, ha without asking for the particulars of their account, the, the info gathering stage, the more that prospect's going to trust you. Because the minute, you know, how I would always position it is, I would get to a certain point, you know, in, in your, you know, and you're qualifying the prospect, you know, not everyone's a good fit. And that goes for inbound accounts, just like outbound, right? And, and um, so, you know, we work through the process. And at a certain point, you realize, okay, this person is someone I can work with and I can help. And I would say, uh, you know, I, my like kill shot phrase is, you know, we got you. That's what I tell. That's what I teach everybody. Yeah. I teach every one of my producers, everyone. I go, hey, Nick, the good news is I got you, man. I, I, I've worked with hundreds of accounts like yours. I got you. Right. So here's where I got to do my job. I got to do my job now. Is that all right? Are we, you know, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I got to grab some info from you. It's going to take 20 minutes. I can do it on the phone or I can send you a form, whatever. Either way, I got to get that info to do my job, but it's, you know, it's time for me to do my job. How do you want to do it? Choose, no problem, boom. But that's after, that's after 10, 15, 20 minutes of talking, you get to that point. Then you ask for the information at the end. If you go, hey, Nick, I work with tons of bakeries. You know, how many employees do you have? You're like, what the, what, who are you? What are you doing here? You mean, because you're trying to qualify them out. You're trying to qualify them out based on data, demographics. When really, I think you sh we should be qualifying people out. One, if you're not doing your job on the front end and kind of understanding and filtering, then that's part of it. But, but I believe a much better way to go about selling insurance is to disqualify people on mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Because, and there's a couple reasons for that. One, uh, drastically improves your close ratio because if someone believes what you believe and buys into the process, then you're you're almost they're almost sold before you even get off the phone two yep. uh and this goes for small accounts become big accounts big accounts become small accounts what matters is that you have accounts on the books now granted there are some situations where hey we don't write anything less than five thousand in revenue premium etc those things are real i get that but like your prospecting or your inbound lead flow should should be generating accounts closer to that ilk more consistently there's always going to be exceptions but like if you are a you know, a general agency or you do a, a broad spectrum of say commercial or a wide range, writing the type of people who believe what you believe, right? That I'm choosing you. I'm willing to buy into the mindset that I'm going to choose you. I'm going to trust you versus, you know, Nick, you seem like a nice guy and I'm willing to let you quote my insurance and uh, hey, maybe we can even go golfing together. But next year, regardless of what you say, I'm going to do the same crap again. And I'm going to send it out to all these guys. Like, even if they're the perfect account and all their demographics line up exactly with what you want, if their mindset doesn't match your mindset, it's good, not going to be a great account. And you might be able to write it once and post on LinkedIn and thump your chest and tell everyone how you're this great producer, but you're going to go through all the same bullshit again next year if their mindset doesn't align with you. Dude, 100% agree. And uh, the process for me, it's like I started running it. I'm like, I want to see these bastards true colors as early as I can. Yeah, because what, what kept happening was no matter how I qualified it, I quoted small percentage. We're giving that number to the incumbent. 
If you're going to do me like that, well, I don't want to work with you, one. That's not how I would operate. But two, I want to find that out before I spend 90 to 120 days quoting you. Yeah. So let's shrink the process and let's force the prospect to actually answer a question. Are you going to hire me or not? And that's some of the biggest pushback that, you know, that I've gotten is like, well, how can you possibly be a war without a coverage analysis or without um, you know, finding pain or experience model analysis? And it's like, all that's going to show you is that the other agent did a shitty job, right? If you look at the coverage, okay, great. That's shitty coverage. You're going to rewrite it anyway. Why do you need that to qualify the prospect? And it's exactly what you're saying. Like, is this prospect going to be a good fit for my process? Do I want to work with them? Do they want to work with me? Because believe it or not, yeah. they have a say in this. Yeah, yeah. Right? And here's how I work. And if that's not going to be a fit for me prospect, then there's other brokers who are willing to quote it. And I'm, I will happily make the introduction for you. Particularly my top competition, so you can waste their top damn time for 120 days while I'm out working on other stuff. Yeah. I, I need that to qualify. I, I agree with you. I uh, It's funny. Um, uh, Mike Asalas posted something the other day about how uh, someone he was talking to said that um, their agency principal wouldn't allow them to BOR because of E and O issues, E and O concerns. And well, I was like, true. I was like, that's beautiful because one, most likely, if that agency principal looked into their own agency, there's probably E and O concerns all over, like every freaking agency that exists. And two. If you properly document your conversations, there is quite literally no additional E and O exposure by BORing an account because you have you haven't actually changed coverage, right? So, like, where the real E and O issues start to come in is on misrepresentations around coverage. And if you properly articulate and document a BOR process, you're not increasing. And, and let me know if I'm wrong about this, but my understanding is that you're not. You're in no way increasing your E and O exposure by BORing an account, right? Am I am I correct in saying that? It, it took me a while and going on, you know, a lot of these calls to figure out why agencies were saying that. Because when, yeah. I mean, I had it internally when I first started. That was one of the you know, one of our account managers. That's the first thing she said to me. It's an E and O issue. Son of a bitch. I don't even care then, right? We got we guaranteed revenue. Let's figure out the you know. Let's make it not an E and O issue. Whatever we need to do. And that was the first right. time I heard that. What do you mean it's an E and O issue? And so I, I dug into it. I understood, okay, well, what can I do on the front end to prevent it from being an EO issue? Okay, so we worked through that. What I found going through all these calls with producers, agency owners, I didn't know this. So I started doing this full time. Years ago, to be a war, you did not have to submit a new application or a new submission. Mm. So you would sign the BOR and the policy would just transfer to you. You didn't even have to look at it. So, okay, oh, I get it now. I get where they're saying it's an EO issue because if you don't actually re underwrite it, and the thing just transfers, you're, you truly are inheriting somebody else's mistakes at that point. But that doesn't exist anymore. For the most part, most carriers, I'm sure there's one or two, somebody's going to be listening. Well, technically, this carrier out in whatever, you know, Alabama yeah, yeah. required, like, okay, for the most part, you don't, you, you can't do that. You have to submit a new, a completely new submission. So you have to re-underwrite it. So the carriers, the process actually forces you to re-underwrite it. So the only potential, you know, issue that you would have is if they had a coverage on their current policy, you take it over on BOR, you resubmit to that carrier, the incumbent carrier, or the rest of the marketplace, and you place that coverage with anybody, the incumbent carrier or a new carrier, and you missed one of the coverages during your analysis process. However, that same E and O exposure exists if you quote. Yeah, yeah. If you if you're canceling right? and rewriting, so, the same exact thing happens. Because if you quote and they let's say they had a coverage and they go, you didn't put it on there, they're probably gonna see you anyway. So I my, I had it with my old agency. Well, the quote didn't have it. Right. So you you have the same exposure. So it's really I think it's just it's a way that I think you know, it's a way for people to just kind of say, I don't want to deal with the BOR. And dude, I was the same way in the beginning. The first time I heard of it was a job interview in California. And I was at working at Brown Brown, we were quoting stuff, cold call and just kind of hammered, like grinding it out. And um, I interviewed with this one firm and it wasn't clear on their website that they did this. And I sit down in the interview and the, the agency principal was like, we only be a war here. And I couldn't, I didn't get it like, at all. I'm like, yeah. I go, the first question I asked, I go, well, then how do you write new business? I, I could have told you right then I wasn't going to get the damn job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In his face, it's like, this guy just doesn't understand. So, but I started asking questions like, okay, so. So I don't get it. How do you write your business? How do you do this? And basically what he came down to, and he said to me, he's like, hey, clearly you don't get this. Why don't you go be an underwriter for five years? Then you can come back and maybe we would consider hiring you to go out in the field. I was pissed. I'm like, I'm like 
one, I would get fired as an underwriter. I would not last a day as an underwriter. And I was frustrated. And so that's why I took the other job for, um, as, a, as a broker in California. That's where I quoted all those landscapers. It wasn't until after that, I'm like, maybe that dude's onto something. Yeah. And it kind of just like opened my eyes to like, okay, maybe there's a different way that I can bring on new business rather than just going to quote again. Yeah. I, I think, I think, you know, just putting a pin in the E and O thing. If you're documenting, if you're documenting your conversations and you're working through processes, there is no additional E and O concern. Because even if you did straight BOR, right? Even if you just sign the letter, letter goes in, all of a sudden the policies are in your name, right? Well, then all you need to do when you get them is look at them and review them and make sure that the coverage is right, right? And if all of a sudden you see that the liability is half what it should be, you call your now new client and go, hey, man, just so you know, this is not near where it should be, X, Y, Z. We just need to bump this up or whatever. And then you make the proper adjustments. I think it's, I think oftentimes people, the, the idea of anything different scares them. I know for a long time, BOR scared me. And I think, I think it has a lot to do. I think the BOR process um, exposes our insecurities in sales, right? Because when we're canceling and rewriting something, we feel confident that we're coming in with a better price and different coverage and a new carrier. And look at all this work I did. And I earned this business. Where with the BOR, we're like, look, you need to buy me right? Like I, did, I have a strategy that I'm going to deliver. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to be a partner, et cetera, you know, consult, you know, whatever, whatever, however you position yourself exactly. But like that, so much of that has to do with my confidence to help you versus me bringing you something that I feel is superior and therefore gives me confidence. If that makes sense, it's like intrinsic versus extrinsic uh, confidence in terms of whether we're comfortable with a BOR or not. And I definitely think it exposes people who are not, and again, all of us probably, especially early in our careers. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that some are better than others. Just I do think it exposes our insecurities and our own ability to be value providers. And I, I could not agree 100% more. I think that, yeah, 100% more. That's how you say it. Damn, I got all chipped up. <laughs> I, basically, I could be a war. I can, can't talk. Um, but I remember, I'll never forget it, dude, because I was trying to get other people, different, you know, different agencies on that. We're trying to, I thought was, Hey, we should all be doing this. Like, this is the way, like, this is, you said all the time, this is the way, like, that's how I felt about the BOR. I'm like, come on. Like, yeah. Yeah. But you got me doing this yet. And, um, we sit around the office and this producer came in and was like, I didn't get the deal. Cause carrier, the carrier pricing wasn't good enough. Bummer. Next year, nonchalant, casual. That was it. And I went home to my wife. I'm like, I finally get it. I get why. People don't want to do this because they have an out. There's an excuse when you yeah. don't get a deal when you quoted it. There's always somebody to blame. The carrier wasn't the carrier wasn't a competitive enough, competitive enough. They gave the number to the incumbent. You know, hey, all this stuff's out of my control. Well, I was tired, like, tired of having stuff out of my control. And so I wanted you know, the BORs to, the way that you control that. But ultimately, it's on you. And so there is no yeah. excuse. I didn't do a good enough job. I didn't explain it correctly. They didn't get it, whatever it is, but it, there's no way out. There's no excuse other than your process. So I think that's that's a huge hurdle to get over. Um, and even me at the beginning, I was like, I couldn't fully get to it. Like I had this vision, this dream. Okay, I want to build it uh, completely on BOR. That's all I want to operate on. And in the beginning, I would still, like if the revenue was big enough, I'd freaking back down and I'd quote it. Yeah. I'd, be like, I'd make the BOR pins and go, hey, Nick, that's great, but we're not going to do that. You're interested in quoting though. Yeah, shit, sure. Hey, I'll do it. It ruins all credibility. Not only with that prospect, but then the next prospect. Because now I'm going into like, I've got no, like I'm looking at the next prospect in the eye. I'm like, I only deal more. Well, except the one yesterday when I caved and I quoted. So talking about confidence, like yeah. unless you fully commit to it, it starts to eat away at what you're doing because you're saying one thing and you're doing another. Like, well, I only be a war unless you push me hard enough, then I'll quote. It. Yeah. And so really buying in and fully going in, like, this is how I do business. That was game changing for me because now it unlocks the, a different level of conversation with the prospects. It's so funny, the similarities between the BOR process. Now that you're explaining it and we're talking through it and how I teach selling inbound insurance, you know, when I'm working with a coaching client or whatever, one of the things that I talk them through is like, if you focus and develop a flow of inbound leads, you, you become supremely confident in the fact that you don't need that lead to be successful, right? Yeah. That person calls you. And if you don't go straight to information gathering, if you flip 
the standard process on its head and you move information gathering to the very last step and you ask some open-ended questions and you confirm what's actually where they add value, you're able to disqualify the people right up front who aren't a good fit for your business, right? Because you're never going to be able to control. One with, with BORs when you reach out to somebody on paper and info Zoom in the magazine article you found their business, they could seem amazing and you get on the phone with them and they could be a complete jackass and just not a good fit for you, right? So like, but you know, and like you said, you got to have the confidence to back away and say, hey, this is how I do business, I'm sorry. With inbound, it's made even easier because if you ask those questions up front, you can just say, hey, I'm sorry, but I, I'm just, I don't have a good market for you. Uh, or I just don't have a good solution for what you're asking for. And you never have to get to the point where you're spending 30 minutes gathering information, sending it to whoever does your quoting or quoting it yourself, worrying about following up, where if you go information gathering first, then you, you do all this wasted time up front. You go through all this process on the back end. You send them their proposal or you try to get them back on the phone, whatever your process is, only to find out that their brother's their agent and they were just trying to get another price to give them a hard time. Right. And you're like, and then, and then you back all the way through that process and you start going inbound leads are terrible. These people are tire kickers. Small commercials, the worst. You can't grow up, you know. And I'm like, no. This is not a prospect problem. This is a systems and process problem. And mm -hmm. if we spend that time and have a set of standards, right? I only work on BOR. I only work with customers who believe in this. You have to buy into my process. But in exchange, I'm going to deliver this strategy for you and blah, blah, blah. You know, your value pitch, right? It's the same exact thing with inbound, where if you ask those questions up front, if you allow people to define what actually is success to them, right? And, that, and that's a big part of what our process is, is like, let the person tell you why they're actually going to buy. They may call you on price. Price may actually be a concern. But if you let them talk and you, you label and reconfirm what, what is really important to them, oftentimes, while price might be why they called, it is, and, and study after study has found this to be true, it is rarely why they actually buy. But we don't realize that if we gather information up front and we don't know what that information, we don't know what the real reason they're buying is, if we go information gathering first. So to me, this it's it's just, it's really opening my eyes to how uh, different but similar this focusing on BOR is versus, you know, and the inbound process. Like done correctly, they're actually fairly similar. I had no idea. I'm one of the guys that assumed. I just assumed inbound, you're getting all the information up front, you're trying to sell them on a quick quote, right? Yeah. And you're spot on. And the similarity is, I think, fighting that urge for every insurance broker. I don't know why. But the first thing is like, give me the information. What do I need? Like, that's the first step when they get a prospect, inbound, outbound, whatever it is. Like, we need to change what our first step is. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing to create a different experience for these prospects. It's scarcity versus abundance mindset. So mm -hmm. one of the reasons why, again, why I've always leaned into inbound is that I knew that with the right amount of focus and work up front and building you know, these educational platforms, be they on YouTube, your website, et cetera, wherever you decide to, to build it out, you create a consistent flow of business. And what that allows you to do, in my opinion, from a confidence perspective, is operate from a place of complete abundance, which is I could go 0 for 10 today and it doesn't mean shit because I got 10 more leads coming in tomorrow and I can get after it again. I got a bad day. Maybe I'm in a bad mood. Maybe my mind's just off. Maybe I got something going on at home and I'm not. Fo but I think the problem is when, when we don't do that work and we are just getting one inbound lead a week or you know, maybe two referrals and it's not enough and we, we haven't built that engine or we don't have a way of prospecting or, or consistency in our prospecting or, or whatever, then everything is so scarce that if a lead comes in, it's like, oh my God, I got to write this. Like, if I don't write yeah. this, we're not going to put premium on the books this week. And, and that desperation and scarcity surrounding that is what forces us to, or not forces us, but I think is, is part of the reason why we operate in these ways that, that don't actually produce results. Like, we just, I know I need this information to quote and, oh my God, I got to get this business in. So give me that information so I can go quote, feel like I've done something and hopefully get premium on the books. And it's like, it's like, okay, I get that, but let's remove that by building up 
by building abundance into the front end. So for you, I know, you know, and I've talked about on the show before how I do that with inbound, but when you're prospecting on a, for, on a BOR perspective, how do you go about creating abundance in the prospects that you have in front of you? Like, are you subscribed to a, to a insurancexdates.com? Is it, you know, wh- where, what kind of systems, what kind of ideas are you using in order to create that prospect abundance on the front end? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. When you were at, I think you had just started Rogue Risk. At the time, I started doing videos in 2019. And I, I, I built my book 12 years on cold call. Like, that's what I did. Every agency has that, like, it's cold call. You know, I'd make, I would grind it out. I'd make, you know, I still know. I could make 25 calls in a 40-minute period. So I'd schedule those. I'd go anywhere from 50 to 100 a day, depending on the time, right? And I just hammer the phone. So that's the system that I used. And it, it was, to me, it was reliable. I knew if I made X amount of calls, I'd get X amount of appointments. And I protected that time like crazy. Nothing could get in the way in that time. Because I knew that if I just did that, I would be, I'd be okay. I, had leads, I would have leads coming in. And so for me, it was always cold calling. I was trying to figure out the video thing. And um, I remember watching your shit. And not that you should be, you get my point. Like, no, no, yeah, so, yeah, no, yeah. This dude, like, he's got this inbound thing dialed in. And I... For me, I never could break away enough from the cold calling to actually, because it worked. And so yeah. I was like, having a hard time to like just totally blowing it up. So I used the video a little bit differently. But for me, it was it was cold call. And the other thing that I think this this misconception out there around the BOR, or maybe it's misunderstood, the BOR is actually a prospecting tool, right? People just think it's a letter to get business. But you can actually use it as a tool two different ways. One is if you position it correctly on the front end, it becomes a more interesting prospect uh, process for the prospect. Right, so if we say, "Hey, look, quoting actually hurts your premium. You have some fifteen minutes to learn a new strategy, or for me to show you a strategy that you can, you know, navigate the market." You're going to set more meetings because people that ever gives you the can response about like my agent, they don't actually like their agent. They probably haven't seen their agent. They just don't want to go through the quoting process. Yeah. So we make the process different. If we make it more exciting, more people are going to say yes. I, you know, we were talking really about being in, putting yourself in the consumer shoes. And this is an example I use all the time. If a mechanic called you up right now, I don't know what kind of car you drive, but if a mechanic called you up and said, hey, Ryan, look, mechanic, I want to take over your, your maintenance program for your vehicle. I need you to drive down on Saturday. We're going to run a diagnostics report on your vehicle. It could take about an hour and a half. Then we can go get some lunch. We can kind of bullshit it. Just to make sure we get to know each other. And then we'll run the report. I'll probably follow up with some questions. You know, tire pressure. Could you run out to the garage, get all that stuff for me? And then we'll meet again in a week and a half and I'll show you the report and I'll show you if anything's wrong with your car. It's like Holy shit, dude. Should I do that? Maybe. But I'm not that kind of time. But if, like, if they called you up and they're like, you know, hey, Ryan, I know you drive a Chevy Tahoe. We found that most mechanics will tell you uh, to uh, put synthetic oil in a Tahoe. For whatever reason, it actually has the opposite effect. It causes your car to break down sooner. Do you have 15 minutes to see if we're how you know, we might be able to help you out with this new strategy of how we're, we're helping other Tahoe owners? It's like, well, dude, shit, I got an oil change next week. Like, what do you mean? I'm about to dump that shit in there. Now, my wife back checked me. She's like, is that true? No, that's not true. Don't, so don't, if you got to drive a Tahoe, don't worry yeah, about yeah, yeah. Well, but, the, but the concept is, what's happening now? I've already solved the prospect's problem. Yeah. I already know their problem. I don't need anything from them to tell them their problem. I have the problem and I have their solution. Yep. You're going to generate more interest. And then the final piece on the prospecting side with the POR is you create more time to do whatever it is that works for you. If you're really good at, it, at inbound, if you're really good at uh, cold call, outbound networking, a lot of times we don't spend time on it because we're stuck quoting this damn bullshit. Yeah, yeah. So if we can remove that part, remove the info gatherer, remove the, remove the coverage analysis for anybody that's not a client, we just created all, you know, all this time to then go back out and repurpose that you know, to drive more opportunities. Yeah, I love it, dude. Dude, I want to be uh, I want to be cognizant of your time, of our audience's time. This has been a tremendous conversation. I'm so glad that we finally did it. I know uh, a lot of it was me just rescheduling in my life, but dude, I'm so glad that we had a chance to connect at this level. Share what you're doing. It's producer systems. Let people know where they can connect with you, where they can learn more about what you do, and if they want to work with you or just reach out and 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 learn more. Uh, where should everybody go? The yeah, best way probably LinkedIn. They're pretty active on there. You follow me there, connect with me there, message me there. It's me in the uh, the chat. It's not a bot. So you get, you'll get me. And, um, or you go to our website, producer.systems. My email's on there. You shoot me an email, but happy to help with any any questions on this process. Like, you know, just figure it out. If, no matter where you're at, right? You want to just get your BOR process more dialed in or you're like, okay, quote now it's freaking miserable. I don't even know where to start. Yeah. You know, hit me up with any questions you got. I love it. Guys, I'll have all the links in the show notes. Uh, dude, appreciate the hell out of you. Um, look forward to more and uh, we'll connect on LinkedIn. 
Dude, sounds good. Appreciate you having me on. All right, buddy. I'm going to Shaboom's.